What's up, guys? It is your girl, Destiny Gilliam, owner, founder, and director of The Creative Reading Coach, where we specialize in creating the most simplified tools for your child to read, and we also offer online reading tutorials. Super excited about today's video because it's about the six things that your child's teacher really, 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 really wants you to know about their reading, but they may not articulate it, they may not have the time to say it, or it's something like, hmm, I never thought about that. So, so excited about this video, especially because in my past life, I used to be a fourth and fifth grade teacher, um, and these are things that I will always want my parents to know. Now, before we get started, if you are interested in joining our family, that is super simple. We start out with a free consultation to let you know if we will be a good fit for you. Once you're ready to make that next step, just click the link in the description box and it'll take you to our consultation page. Now, now that that's out the way, let's get started. So what are the six things? My hair is like all over the place, guys. Let's fix this. There we go, it's bothering me, perfect. Um, first thing first, we need to know what are the legal requirements that your child's teacher um, is mandated to give them, okay? You might say, Justin, that's such a, a large and harsh word to say for legal, but it is true. A lot of parents believe that, oh, my child goes to school, so they should be good to go, and the teacher's gonna teach them what they need. And mama, that is simply not the case. If your child is in fourth grade, by law, that teacher is responsible for showing them that fourth grade content, okay? If they were to take and teach them like kindergarten content at the end of the school year, they would not be prepared for whatever the high level stakes exam um, that your child is responsible for, okay? Now, I hear you saying, well, how's my child supposed to grow? This is where you step in and you are the biggest advocate for your child. The teacher has to expose them to on grade level content for everyone, however, a good school and a good teacher offers small group instruction, which should be on that child's level. Now, when I say on their level, that means that if a child is performing above fourth grade, then they should be seeing content that looks like that. If a child is performing at that kindergarten mark, then they should be um, working on those things. The key is, not only are they providing those small group instruction, but where are, they get, where are they getting that data from so that they are able to make those small groups, okay? So tip number one, legally, your child has to get the content that they are supposed to receive for that particular grade level. Remember, a school and a teacher should be providing small group instruction for your kiddo. And if you need help with that, just say, hey, I wanted to know when my child will be seen in small group and how often are they meeting with you? I know they're performing a couple years behind and I just wanted to cross my, uh, cross my T's and dot my I's. That's a simple email, guys. Second thing that your child's teacher wants you to know they want you to know that reading at night does not solve the problem. I want to break that news to you. A lot of people think, well, we read every single night. Mom, that's excellent. And it does expose them to visualization techniques so that they can see and picture the words in their head. It does expose them to vocabulary. It does expose them to comprehension when you're having a conversation about the book. However, we want your child to read independently. So simply going home at night, grabbing a book, which is good, and reading it aloud to them is not 100% going to solve the problem, especially if your child is having a hard time with phonics and decoding, okay? So you're halfway there if you're reading to them at night, now you just need to take it a step further, okay? Third thing, I saw this a lot when I was in a classroom. A lot of students have memorized words. And so what happens is, is that they become word callers. And these students will trick you up so good because they will read beautifully. The words will come out fluently. And then you ask them what they read and they're like, I don't know. And what that does for you, mom, you're like, but my baby can read. They, they just read this book to me. And it's like, mama, they just did some word calling. That's it. That's all they did. They just simply did some word calling. So your teacher, your child's teacher wants you to understand that there is a word calling, then there's actually comprehending. 
from my experience, no one likes a child that cannot read fluently and then they are, um, how do I put this? So if they can't read fluently, but they understand, right? We would like that versus them reading fluently and then not understanding, okay? Because what that does is, mom, that allows you to say, we're just gonna work on some fluency strategies. We're gonna pick one book every single week and we're gonna read that aloud until it's fluent and then we'll keep adding to it, okay? So yeah, understand that word calling and comprehending, two different things, mama, two different things. The next thing that they want you to know, there is a thing called growth versus mastery. We want both. In a perfect world, we want both. And it can happen. Growth is basically, my student came in starting reading at, let's say, second grade. By the time they left me in the spring, they were reading, let's say, at fourth grade. That is growth, right? The problem is, is that, and think about tip number one, if they're at sixth grade, and they're, if they're at the sixth grade mark, and they still make that two years worth of growth, they still did not master sixth grade standards. So your child's teacher wants you to understand that even though they may not be performing on grade level, look how far they came. Look how far they've come, okay? The next thing is they want you to know when should you seek additional support and how do you know if it's worth it, okay? So for example, when I was in the classroom, I would have so many parents say, well, my child has a tutor. And I'm like, that's great right because i'm in that work now okay however you have to understand what type of tutor that you are seeking and getting and there is a youtube video um, that i did about this i'll try to link it somewhere around here um there are so many people who will come out and say i can tutor your child and you have no idea what they're working on okay if your child is performing a year and two and three years behind grade level, just finding someone who is a generalist is not going to help you. Instead, it may push them back further because what happens is they'll be going all around the mountains. We did this comprehension strategy, we did that, we did that, but you're not really getting to the heart of the problem. And the heart of the problem is, is their decoding skills. That's what we want to fix, okay? So your child's teacher wants you to know, yes, that is great that you have outside support, but is it the right support, okay? And the last thing, this is book level etiquette, and this is something that is near and dear to my heart, okay? Oh gosh, these braids are all over the place, guys. That is near and dear to my heart. Book level etiquette. A lot of people will see like, my child came home with a second grade book and they're in sixth grade you can read something harder than that. And what that says that does a couple things. Number one, you're telling your child, and I'm going to say it, you're telling your child that they are not good enough in that moment, okay? Because you're letting them know, like, you're older. Why, why is this a baby book? You know what I mean? Think about what that does for them, okay? The second thing that it does is when you take that second grade book from them and you put that sixth grade book in front of them, what you're essentially doing is you're making them work and work and work and work and work. And that's when the shutdown happens, right? Because they already know. They're like, I was good with my second grade book, you know? Challenge me with a harder second grade book. Don't challenge me with a sixth grade book because it's like, what am I supposed to do with that? I don't understand the words. I don't understand the concepts. And then, mama, you're going to come right behind and ask me questions about this book that I don't get, right? So a book level is really 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 important to the child you have an independent reading level that's what they can do independently by themselves you have an instructional level that's where you should be teaching them or the teacher is teaching them and then the last level is the frustrational level that means that's the level that hands down they shouldn't touch it don't pass go don't collect two hundred dollars that book is too difficult a lot of you guys skip right to the frustration level forgetting those things um forgetting those other two things independent and what was the other one independent and instructional okay so that was really really good those were the six things that your child's teacher would like you to know so please 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 do me a quick favor leave a comment i love your feedback too leave your comments in the uh in below <laughs> um, and let me know what you think and other than that stay focused stay encouraged and when you're ready to join our online reading program you may do so at any time 
and get started by clicking the description box and getting a consultation. Peace.